Hey, how's it hanging, guys? This is Jeff with I Download Blog. We're going to talk about iTunes Match in depth. Of course, iTunes Match was just released today to the public, and there's lots and lots to talk about. First, we're going to talk about how to install iTunes Match, where to get it, all that goodness, and then we're going to talk about how to manage your iTunes Match on your desktop and how to manage it on your iOS device, how to manage the storage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have a lot to talk about here. But one of the first questions is. What is iTunes Match? I get that one all the time. What exactly is it? Well, iTunes Match basically consists of three things. Number one, it tries to match your music. Number two, if it can't match your music, it'll upload the music to iCloud. And then the third step is it allows you to access your music content from multiple devices. Now, the next question is, where do I get it? Well, that's an easy question to answer because iTunes Match is bundled directly into iTunes itself. So if you download iTunes 10.5.1, which is the latest public version, you get iTunes Match automatically. How do you set it up? Well, setting it up is just as easy. Once it's installed, go to store and then select turn on iTunes match. And then from there, it'll ask you to enable iTunes match. Now, keep in mind that this is a service that costs $24.99 a year. So this is a yearly fee that you pay via your Apple ID. You just put in your Apple ID. It'll ask you that once you enable it. And then it'll charge your account $24.99. You can see I'm just typing in my password here and I just go ahead and subscribe to that. And it'll subscribe me to iTunes Match. Super simple, super easy to set up. And then that's pretty much it. The next steps are just more time consuming than anything. iTunes will scan your iTunes library. It'll find the songs that it already has available to match. And then it'll upload the songs that it cannot match. And it'll also do the album artwork, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the time consuming portion. Now, how do you check iCloud status? Well, once everything is matched, it's uploaded, et cetera, it's complete, you can right click on this bar here and select iCloud status. This will actually show you the status of all your music tracks so you know exactly what happened to them. You can see here on this particular album, all of them are matched. If you look at the iCloud status, they are matched. So I did not have to actually upload those particular songs. The more songs that are matched, the more time you save and the more bandwidth you save. Now here you can see an example of an uploaded song. This did require upload. Apple obviously did not have it available to match, so I needed to upload that. Now there are two more status types. One is not eligible, as you can see here, so it wasn't eligible to be uploaded or matched for whatever reason. I don't know why exactly. And then you have this one here that says error. So it would not match or upload because of an error. You can try to re-upload it by right clicking, select add to iCloud if you want, but I had mixed results on that. So that's an overview of the iCloud status, but that's not all. You also have your download status. If you right click here and select iCloud download, that'll put this little cloud icon on there. And then you can click that and sort by download status. So you can tell whether the the file exists on your local machine, whether it's in the cloud, whether there's a duplicate, whether it could not upload to iCloud, etc. Now that goes right into playing music in iTunes. With iTunes Match, it's a little bit different when it comes to playing music in iTunes. You'll notice the iCloud download status here on the right, which we just talked about. You can see there's five tracks that are available on iCloud or in iTunes Match, and there's one track, the one that does not have the cloud icon, that's available on my local system. Um, and you can see if you right click on there, there's no reveal and finder option here because it's in the cloud. There's no finder where you can right click and select finder. Now on this one, you can see where it has show and finder. See that? That's because the file is actually on my local machine because it has downloaded. Now if I want to download a song, I just click the cloud icon and you can see the status right here. There's the status bar. It is downloading and it's fairly fast. And once that download is complete, if I right click on that particular track, you'll see show in finder because it exists now on my local machine. Now, if I just want to outright play a song, I just click the play button or double click it without clicking the cloud button and it'll just play or stream that particular track. It actually streams it. It did not download it. You can see the cloud icon is still right here denoting that it has not downloaded. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to skip around in this track. I'm going to skip to the end and it's playing immediately. And you can see it still has not downloaded at all. So it sort of streams it, even though Apple denies that streaming is on here. Um, you can see it, Show and Finder is not available. It has not downloaded to my local machine. So there's still a little controversy over that, but it sure appears to me that the song is indeed streaming. Now let's talk about handling duplicate items. How does iCloud handle that? Well, if you do have a duplicate, you'll notice that this little cloud icon, look how it looks a little different. There's actually a double cloud indicating a duplicate. 
And indeed it is. You see this song, Beat of My Heart, and this song, Beat of My Heart. Same exact song. If you click the little double cloud, it'll say this song is already in iCloud. You can keep the duplicate or you can delete it and move it to the trash if you like to do that. It's up to you. Now, iCloud errors. There are several errors that you'll get or you'll notice in iCloud. The first one is this one right here. This error is that this item is not eligible for iCloud. So you can see it's not eligible for whatever reason, I'm not sure. And this one shows just a plain old iCloud error. Whatever that means, it's very vague in its description, but it happened few and far between. Now the next step is playing music on your iOS devices. Here's where it gets really fun. You can play all your iCloud music, all your iTunes matched music on your iOS devices. That includes your iPad, your iPod Touch, your iPhone. Now notice I have 5,202 tracks on this 32 gigabyte iPhone 4S. Now I'm no math major, but something tells me that 32 gigabytes is not enough, especially when you're only using 16 of those gigabytes, not enough to store 5,000 songs. So that is what iTunes Match brings to the table. You can store an infinite amount of songs with a limited amount of space. Now let's download some music. As you can see here, there's an option to download all right here, or I can tap the little cloud icon next to each track and download them all one by one. But first, let's check our space one more time. You can see I have 16.3 gigabytes available before I start downloading, just to show you how much space uh, these iCloud or these music downloads take up. So I'm gonna tap download all just for the sake of time. And it's gonna start downloading all of these one by one, as you can see here as I scroll up to the top. So you can see the little circle icon indicating the uh, status of each download. And if I tap that, obviously it will stop the download if I like to do that. And we're almost, almost on our way here and there's 16 songs. Let's see our space. You can see it dropped down 0.1 gigabytes. So uh, it does indeed use up your space when you download your music from iCloud. So I'm continuing to download here and we're done. So that entire album, it's a double album, the entire album is downloaded and you can see there's no more cloud icon next to that album because it is all local. It's all on the device. It is stored on the device. So let's check our space again. And now we're at 16.1 gigabytes. So you can see how music can quickly add up, especially if you download a lot. Now what about managing space on iCloud with iTunes Match, etc.? I'm gonna show you how to do that now. If you wanna delete a track, you just swipe like that and delete. Just swipe like that and delete. It's very you know, iOS centric, just like you always do on iOS. And once you delete, notice that the cloud icon comes back. So it doesn't actually delete the music from iCloud. It just deletes it from your local device. So you can delete all those and notice how the space is going back up. It's at 16.2 now. And you still have the same amount of songs that shows you that the songs aren't actually deleted, it just removes it from your local device, which is really, really cool, and it's one of the best aspects of iTunes Match. You never have to worry about your music going anywhere. If you want to delete all of the music on that particular album, just swipe on the album, tap delete, and it's all gone. You notice all the cloud icons are back, and you can re-download them all later if you want. Now say for instance you're on the road, you don't have an internet connection, and you only want to display the music that is local on your device. It's actually downloaded on your device. So just go to your settings app and then go to the music panel here. And then at the top you should see this option for show all music. That shows everything once it's enabled. But if you disable it, it only shows the music that has been downloaded to your local device. I don't have any downloaded right here, so you can see it's empty. So that is show all music. That's a great option to have. Let's go ahead and turn that back on so we can see all of our music again. And you can see it's going to reinitialize. And there it is. So here are all my music tracks. Now one thing I did notice about iTunes Match is it kind of messes up some of the album art sometimes. I don't know if that's just because I've been beta testing this thing so much. I've been uploading, downloading all my iCloud library a million times, but that is not the right album art for that particular album. Now there is one more cool thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to turn off show all music again and you can see I'm not showing hardly any of my music because I only have a couple of tracks downloaded. You can still actually search your entire iCloud library just by performing a search even though you're not showing all your music. So this is really really cool for those of you who definitely want to be able to search their music. You can still search your library regardless if you're showing all your music or not. That is really excellent. Now the last topic we're going to discuss is using iTunes Match on another computer. Did you know you could actually do that? It's not just limited to iOS devices. If you have the latest version of iTunes installed on your MacBook Pro for instance, all you need to do is add that computer to iTunes Match 
and then you're good to go. Now you will encounter a message once you enable this computer, you're gonna see where it says iTunes Match is matching a library from another computer. Well, obviously, that's how you got your music on iTunes Match to begin with. So what I recommend is that you have an empty, yes, an empty iTunes library once you enable iTunes Match on the second computer. Make sure your library is empty and then click on Match This Computer. And once you do that, iTunes Match will go through the three steps really quickly usually, and then you're good to go because it has nothing to upload. And then you see it has 5,134 songs available. Just click on Done, and then you'll see this little cloud icon. You'll see cloud icon by music, it'll be like spinning a little bit, and then you'll notice in a few seconds, all your music will be available on your second computer, which is really cool. Just make sure that initially your library is empty because all this music isn't really on your local device, it's just available for download, just like on your iOS device. You see all the little iCloud logos there. So that's really cool. So I hope you really enjoyed this ultimate iTunes match walkthrough. I really enjoyed filming and I really enjoyed walking through iTunes match. If you have any additional questions, make sure you ask in the comment section below and be sure to check out iDownload blog because we'll have written tutorials as well, as well to go along with this video tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This is Jeff with iDownload blog.